45% of the targets needed for that 1.5 degrees. That's how we make and use things. That's how we make and use batteries. The battery passport is a great shining light as to what's possible and what the future looks like. But when we look at the whole economy, and you know, we've been talking about you know, the future and what's needed, um, the economy has been predominantly linear. You know, manufacturers have been buying raw materials, making things, and then selling them. And once that product is sold, that material is lost. They have no means of recovering it, and in many cases, nor has the economy, because we don't know what sits within that product. They do. And when we look at the circular economy's three principles, we have eliminate waste and pollution, circulate products and materials for as long as possible, and then regenerate systems and nature. In order to eliminate waste and pollution, you need to not create it in the first place. And that's a design question. And that design question is crucial when it comes to the battery passport because this whole idea is about illustrating what sits within the product. And we're then able to recover the materials and feed them back into the economy. And then that step sets foot into the resilience space. You know, why do businesses want this, this, this change? Well, actually, they need the raw materials of the future to feed into their manufacturing processes. So you're building a circular system through the passport. And when we look at the, 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 the need to shift towards a, um, a a more climate friendly economy. We always talk about the energy needs. We always talk about where does the energy come from, which is vital, which is why we have the electric cars, because we know that combustion engines are, are not the, the long term future. But when we look at the split as to the, the carbon savings of that transition, 55% comes from the shift to renewables, cleaner energies. But 45% of the targets needed for that 1.5 degrees, that's how we make and use things. That's how we make and use batteries. That's how we, we collect materials and feed them into the economy. And that is huge. And that's everything. It's not just batteries. And I think this is a great example of using digital enablement to track materials within the economy. And this will be for everything in the future. We need to know where those materials are to feed them back into the economy, not only from a resilience perspective, but also from an economic perspective, because you know where your stocks and flows are. And today, we quite simply don't.